Hello and welcome to today's session. Today we are discussing traction. Traction, okay. It's an intervention in the musculoskeletal disorders, okay. Especially the fractures, sprain and strains, okay. So traction is a medical technique used to treat fractures, dislocation and other orthopedic conditions by applying a pulling force on the affected body part. The goals of traction include to align the bones properly, to reduce pain and promote healing. Okay, guys, that is traction. So there are various types of traction depending on the specific condition and the equipment used. Okay, so in um, medical work, we have um, skin traction, we have skeletal traction, and you have manual traction okay so the traction may be continuous or intermittent so it depends let's look at a few or uh, examples the first one is skin traction it's also called uh, the back traction the commonest one being the track back traction and this type of traction involves ap applying a force directly to the skin using adhesive strips or boots that's why it's called skin, skin, okay? So the pulling is on the skin. It's commonly used in the fractures of the femur or the lower leg, okay? So in this case, you find that traction is relatively easy to apply, but it has an ad a disadvantage in that it's not able to provide as much force as the other types of traction. So look at this, okay, I appreciate the bed the injured leg is there and then the boot is there it's applying some force on the skin okay what are the other types of skin traction we could have the back traction okay or extension the one that you are able to see how they are pulling okay it should not be more than 4 kg put on the skin okay we also have the um, four man skin traction we can also have the Hamilton Russell traction, okay? This one is just like the back traction, but with a sling, okay? With a sling. Then you have the Byron traction. It's used for treatment of femoral shaft fractures in infant or children, okay? It combines gallows traction and back traction. Raise the mattress for counter traction. It's rarely used currently. Okay, so these are the types of skin traction. Let's look at skeletal traction. Uh, skeletal traction, we are saying that um, it involves uh, placing pins, wires, and screws directly into the bone, and then attaching weights and pulleys to the pins to apply uh, a controlled pulling force. It's often used for fractures involving the hip, okay? The hip, the femur, and the upper arm, as well as some spinal um, conditions. So you can be able to appreciate the pin is on the bone, the femur, and then it's being pulled, okay? Pulling on the bone. That's why we are referring to it as skeletal traction, okay? We also have others like the cervical traction. I able to appreciate this cervical traction, the pulling, okay, of this one. Uh, this type of traction is used for neck related conditions it involves application of gentle force to the neck to relieve pressure on the cervical spine and treat conditions such as herniated discs or neck muscle spasms it's used to treat uh, temporary conditions like radiculopathy pinched nerves and neck sprains or fractured spine Pelvic traction is used to stabilize and realign fractures. This location involving the, pe the pelvis. Which are these bones involved in the pelvis? P. Pelvis. Okay. P. Pubis. Ischium. Ilium. P. Remember, and a link will be popping up for the anatomy uh, of the body bone songs you can look at this song and it will remind you the different types of bones 
Pelvic traction involves a belt or a harness around the, the patient's pelvis to which weights are um, attached and pulled. Can you be able to see? Yeah, yes. So pelvic traction is a therapy program designed to relieve pain in the lower back, hips and legs. It's normally associated with lower back. That are normally associated with lower back disorders. So this is how we use the pelvic traction. We say that traction can be continuous or intermittent. So for continuous traction, involves the uh, continuous application of pulling force for an extended period. This is often used in the initial stages for treatment of certain fractures or dislocation. It's also called bed traction. So it uses low weights for extended periods of time, up to several hours at a time. So the long duration requires that only small amounts be used. Okay? It's generally believed that this type of traction is ineffective in actually separating the spinal structures. Okay? Remember, for traction to be effective, we must have a counter. We must have, we must pull traction effectively. There must be something to pull against, which is endeavoring to pull or thrust in the opposite direction. <clears throat> These two forces are called traction and counter-traction, respectively, okay? Counter-traction is the force acting in the opposite direction to the applied traction. So, traction can be continuous or intermittent. Continuous is used for initial stages. And then we have now intermittent, which involves applying and releasing the pulling force at regular intervals, this type of traction is used for certain spinal conditions and may be more comfortable for patients in long term. So it helps to relieve pain by improving the circulation to the tissues and reducing the swelling uh, of, the, of those tissues. Can be able to see, okay? Okay, so somebody does the traction and rests. As a result, this one normally increases blood flow uh, from nerve uh, roots to the spinal parenchyma and is related to pain relief after traction treatment. We said um, traction, we have skin traction, skeletal traction, and finally manual traction. This one is highly used in sports, guys. Okay? So this one is a hands-on technique in which a healthcare provider applies a pulling force directly by using the hands. Can you see that? It's useful for temporarily uh, relieving the pain and assess the patient's response to traction before applying other forms of traction, okay? Whether skin or skeletal. So manual traction is minimally invasive and option for, uh, is an option for the neck and back pain. It has been proven to be effective mechanism in providing patients with pain relief and increased mobility. Remember, the main principle behind lumbar and cervical traction is usually to decompress the spine. Okay? Overhead traction is here. It's a type of skeletal traction and you are able to see. Okay. Followed by, so what are the common uh, questions asked here, guys? What is the purpose of traction in orthopedic treatment? Yeah? Yes, it's to apply pulling force and treat fractures and dislocation, okay? B is the correct answer there. So what type of traction involves applying force directly to the skin using adhesive strips or boots? To the skin, guys, to the skin, skin traction, B, good. What is the primary advantage of skeletal traction over skin traction? Yes, it is, it provides pulling force, better pulling force compared to the skin, and that's what we said in slide one. What type of traction is commonly used for neck-related condition? like herniated disc or muscle spasms. Neck, cervical traction, very good. 
What is the purpose of intermittent traction? Intermittent. You're on traction, then you're not on traction. In traction, not in traction, okay? It's to do what? <clears throat> it's used to apply and release the pulling force at different or at regular intervals, okay? What type of traction involves the use of pins, wires, screws directly inserted to the bone? When you hear the bone, we are talking of the skeletal, skeletal traction, okay? Which type of traction is often used in the initial stages for treatment of certain condition? Guys, can be traction can be continuous or intermittent. So continuous is used in the initial stages before other forms of traction. Which form of traction involves a weight and a pulley attached an overhead frame? Overhead traction. Which type of traction <clears throat> the patient's limb is suspended using a weight and pulley attached to an overhead frame? We have already said, guys, that is overhead traction. So traction is most commonly used in the treatment of... Guys, if you fail that one, I'm going to talk to you behind the cameras because you need to identify the orthopedic conditions. That's what we are discussing. So which type of traction is often used in the, in the fractures involving the hip, femur, and upper arm? Skeletal traction, guys, long bones. So what is the main advantage of using manual traction? Manual traction in sport, guys, yeah? It allows? What about the advantage of manual traction? Does it provide continuous pulling traction? No. Does it require less involvement of medical personnel? Is it more comfortable for the patient? Yeah, guys, it's more comfortable for the patient than the rest, okay? Remember, we have to do the manual traction. It's normally done uh, in the field. And possibly it's dangerous because we have to confirm that this guy doesn't have a fracture before we can do the other, the other forms of traction, guys. So, guys, before you do the traction, you have to calculate the traction weight. And in calculating the traction weight, you take 10% of the patient's body weight to calculate the traction, the traction weight. Thank you so much, guys. Enjoy.